Welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob, and today, just like the thumbnail and title suggests, we have to take a look at what is going on with the market and how can we avoid a potential bull trap. So let's take a look and just dive right in. So the first thing, of course, I don't usually take a look at the prices and what's going on with crypto because it's been very flat for quite some time, but I think today is quite appropriate. So the day we're looking at it is uh, January 14th. It's run 1 o'clock p.m. Puerto Rico time. And this is the price action we've had, which is quite surprising, actually. And I think you all know the prices. I don't need to tell you. You probably looked at it. I'm going to guess more than once. And we can see that uh, over the last seven days, I mean, in all honesty, we're crushing it. Bitcoin's up 22%. Ethereum, 20%. Binance Coin, 20 14 for XRP. Congratulations. Uh, let's see. 20% for Doge. <laughs> Polygon, 23. Solana, the big winner. Uh, pretty much for right now, 65% in a week, 35% in 24 hours. Polkadot, 30%. And Avalanche, also on the heels of its big partnership with Amazon. So we take a look at this. We're like, okay, great. Off the moon. Here we go. It's going to be fantastic. And it could be, and it could be sustainable, but I don't really know. So first, we have to take a look at what the heck is going on behind the scenes. First things first is, this is from uh, Ki Young Jun, and he is the... Uh, uh, CEO of CryptoQuant. He says, look, uh, for the past three hours, this was yesterday, someone just bought $4 billion worth of Bitcoin futures in the market orders. And 87 million short positions were liquidated across all exchanges. Now, this was yesterday. And uh, we've had a lot of views on this. Everybody's excited because that pushes the price up, right? Shorts get liquidated. And if we take a look even further. This is on coinglass.com. We can just see how brutal it was for those shorts getting liquidated. You can just see here, and over a, a continuum, over quite a bit of time, October, December, like in three months, four months or so, three months, you can see that uh, shorts really didn't get too too bothered. Uh, longs were getting crushed. And uh, 7th November, when uh, the Bitcoin price, we were looking just to, just before uh, 21,000, uh, it just dropped out the face of the planet. And of course, you had some massive liquidation in the longs of 549 million. Now, inversely, same thing over here. And it's funny because everybody thinks everybody thinks that that the that the price is going to go one way and it goes some. It just always seems to to happen like that. It goes the opposite way. Is it going to sustain though? That's the big question. We can see here that uh, shorts just got obliterated, four hundred seventy-four million, almost an inversion over here. So, are we <clears throat> undervalued or overvalued at this point as we skyrocket back up? Well, not really. If we take a look at the MVRVZC score, which is uh, the market value versus the realized value, then the Z score, which is this uh, red part here, which kind of just shows you, takes out all the noise, we're still undervalued. I mean, after all this, this little 21, 23% pump, we're still undervalued in the green area. So I think there's a little bit more to go on this one, but who knows? And the question then is, well, what is happening? Are, is it just a bunch of accumulation? Well, if we take a look at, uh, this was, used to be called wallet number three, then it transferred over to another wallet. Now I think it's like wallet number four. But this is a whale that's been accumulating for quite some time over years. And we kind of just followed this person, individual or individuals to kind of show us what was happening for, I mean, some people will call it smart money. I don't believe that's true. I think it's just big money. And we can just see that in December, it was nothing but a sell-off, almost 3,000 Bitcoin, December 19, 3,000, 3, 2,000 here. And there really hasn't been much of an accumulation as before when this wallet was accumulating massively. And then as of, as of today, as of just this month, January 11th, no action whatsoever. However, there's still accumulation going on in the background. This is from Santiment, and it states here that there are 416 more addresses holding 100 to 1,000 Bitcoin, which is a 3% a increase in just the past eight weeks. Again, uh, big money is accumulating Bitcoin. So is that's good news, right? That means that we're off the races and we're going to be fine. Fantastic. Hold on. Because the reason why big money is big money is because I like to dump on people like you and me. So just remember that. Even though they're accumulating in the background, doesn't mean that these guys and gals and groups of people are going to hold on forever. There's a site. It's called Look into Bitcoin. Link's in the description. Always link in the description for Look into Bitcoin. It's a free website you can use and it's got high quality charts to take a look at. <clears throat> this one's called Whale Shadows. And I want you, you to remember this every time you think that no one's going to sell and they're going to diamond hands to, <clears throat> to death. Now, there are people that will do that. I personally will hold a lot of my crypto, but I will sell and I'll get to that in a second. 
But we're going to see here, I'm just going to turn on the four to five years for people, individuals of wallets who did nothing but hold for five years, then all of a sudden moved. Now, I'm not saying that they sold, but if I put my Bitcoin into a wallet for five years and then just for funsies, when there was all time highs, then all of a sudden I start to move things around. A little odd, a little peculiar. Usually when I move things, it's I'm moving to an exchange so I can cash out. That's just the four to five year mark. Take a look at the five to seven years. Well, they wouldn't do that to me, would they? Yeah, they would. They'll dump on you too. And same thing over here. But what about the seven to nine year plays? I mean, those are people that would never, ah, shoot, here they go again. So yeah, they're going to sell and they're going to accumulate in these, in these downward phases and they're going to sell and dump on you and the other ones. But what about the 10 year plus OGs? They, ah, son of a gun, they do the same thing. So look, <clears throat> I understand your enthusiasm. I get it because I have the same thing, but we have to be adults and we have to think to ourselves, okay, what is the bigger play here? And if we're going to get excited over a pump, which this is the pump for Bitcoin, of course, crypto, there's uh, there's other ones that we just talked about. It looks pretty good. Let's uh, zoom out just a little bit. What are we excited about? OK, well, in this was our all time highs. 63, excuse me, November 67. We're excited about this. This is what we're excited. Boy, when things are taken away when they are uh, abstained from something, abstained from, from different items, we start to really just look for anything. And I'm not saying this isn't, isn't a great thing. It is welcome by far. But don't get too far ahead of yourself. I don't know if this is going to be sustainable or if this is, as they call, a bull trap. So for me, what I do, I'm not smart enough to time the markets perfectly. I'm not smart enough to, to figure it all out exactly so what i do i do the same thing and I, I get a lot of flack for it which is one dollar cost average even during these turbulent times as things go down because you know people would say hey it's going down to 10 or 12k <clears throat> and i actually believe them i think bitcoin is going to go down, down to 10 or 12k i think it's going to go down further than this so people are like rob why are you dollar cost averaging and just wait until it goes down until it goes on your your hypothesis of 12k that's just it I don't know. I've been wrong before. Newsflash, not perfect. So what do I do? I dollar cost average. And then during little times, I sell a little bit to get some dry powder on, on the sidelines. And the reason why I do this is because when the big bull market hits, and I still think it's going to be 25, doesn't 25, doesn't 26, somewhere around there. When that big top hits, I don't want to be paralyzed by just buying, 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 buying dips, buying and buying, and then buying some more. I want to have that muscle memory of what it feels like to sell. And even though it's not that much, I will still sell, especially when there's profits of 20, 30, and 40% in a, in a 48 hour period or a seven day uh, period. And that's just how I am. Now, uh, you're welcome to do whatever you want to do. I'm not your dad. Uh, this is not investment advice. So if you want to diamond hands it forever uh, and then pass on your grandkids, fantastic. If you want to sell everything, fantastic. I'm not here to persuade you of any way, shape, or form. I'm just trying to give you the options that are out there and not to get ahead of yourself too much. That's just the big thing. However, to, lay, to end this all off with a little, some, some bullish undertones, maybe there's some, something to be said for a big bull market coming. So we just saw that the CPI numbers uh, came in last week. Uh, inflation rate, which is what everybody's what is concerned with, macro events, myself. Uh, inflation rate fell again in December to 6.5%, according to the CPI. That's down from 7.1 in November and a 9.1% peak in June. I thought it was a little bit higher, but uh, whatever. Take a look at trueflation. Monthly CPI declined 0.1%. And to break it all down for December, here's this is where everybody gets that that meme for eggs, which is which is the flex now if you can afford eggs. But it says here are some of the core categories plus other items with notable year-over-year -year price changes. So yeah, inflation's still there, but it's coming down. And that's as predicted, which is pretty crazy as uh, we've moved forward because let's be honest, the Fed hasn't been uh, the greatest of predicting things, but uh, this is what things are right in line with what they thought would happen. So maybe there's going to be a 25 basis points hike, or maybe just a pause. And if there's a pause, you can see that this bull market or these bullish undertones will continue. On top of the fact that I've always said there's two things that are going to hinder us. One is the macro events, and the other one is legislation and what they can do 
as far as regulation. And I think we took a step in the right direction, which is this. Uh, U.S. House Republicans set up crypto committee to oversee a shaky industry. Now, before you scream at the, at the screen, just remember, they're talking about taking a look at the crypto industry and the dirty players in the centralized exchanges, what they're really trying to take a look at, also give us clarity for what's a security, what's a commodity, what is a currency, and of course, what is a digital asset. I still think they should have four. If they can just give us some clarity about this is what it is, this is what it is, no problem. That doesn't affect the code of Bitcoin. That doesn't affect us using that for transactions. That doesn't affect DeFi. That affects nothing except for the larger players who can now get into the industry and go, oh, I'm not going to be you know, pulled uh, forth you know, by the SEC for selling an unregistered security now because I know it is a digital asset or a commodity or whatever else. So that's what happened. U.S. House Republicans plan to set up a committee and move that signals the GOP wants to make crypto a priority. This is going to be chaired by Representative French Hill, Republican of Arkansas. Uh, the vice was the vice chair of the subcommittee will be Representative Warren Davidson, who has also been active on crypto issues. And both of these gentlemen know exactly what crypto is. They're not just clueless like most of the different representatives that are in there. The panel will be responsible for providing clear rules for federal regular regulators like Gary Gensler. So he can just stop enforcing through regulation. And now he gets clear guidelines about what it is instead of them just going, well, I've interpreted it this way. We've got to respond for oversight and policymaking on a new asset class. That sentence last there. On a new asset class, I think tells you everything you need to know. And that is it. So look, that is it for today. I just want to give you a quick update on what's going on. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. We do these things every single day. Just spend a little bit of haywire with things that are going on. We'll try to get into more of a uh, concise schedule moving forward. That's it for me. So thanks so much. I appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.